Hello, welcome to Atler YouTube channel. It is a second part of a series called Surviving as a Mage in a Magic Academy. Let's begin. There was a small building in front of them. The students were thinking what's up with this pathetic building? The prince said my servants' quarters are bigger than this. They expect us to live in such a place. Lian was thinking that it looks like a tight fit for this many people. The prince said I keep getting more and more disappointment. But then suddenly when Lian entered into the building, he fell down inside the ground and noticed that. There is no one except him everyone has disappeared. He was thinking where am I? Then suddenly someone said welcome small magician, where will you go? He was thinking that I see what's going on. As expected of a magic academy, the dorm is a magic tower, he asked where can I go? The magic voice said you are quick to adapt. Right now, the only places you can go are your personal room and the iron break room, exclusive to your first years. Lian asked, does that mean there are other places I can go in the future? The magic voice said that's right. Some places only required you to know the name, while others require you to know something extra. However, you can't go for now, the headmaster prohibited it. Lian was thinking that the headmaster is strict for no reason. He replied in that case please take me to my personal room with a bright light magic voice said i understand welcome to the academy young magician after entering into the room he was reading a book in which there is written about einrogard the academy he's reading that except for the core subjects the remaining classes can be freely picked you can decide your classes after trying them out for a month in the book he read a quote written by the headmaster and he found that the headmaster's name is OSU Gone Adults. It doesn't seem as strict as he was expecting. This is much easier going than grad school. He looked around the room and thinking that this room had almost everything he needed. However, Lian was the only one who thought like this. All of the other novels were disappointed and thinking what is this? There is nothing here it's just a small ridiculous room. With a smile he was thinking that he gets the rules. Why don't I see that? What classes the others are signing up for? After some time he entered into the break room. Yonar said I want to learn alchemy. I have always been interested in it. My dream is to set up my own workshop and provide products to the imperial family. Lian said it sounds profitable. With a scary shiny eye she asked wanna work with me. He said alchemist is not an easy business. So let me think about it. Alchemy industry was highly competitive from spreading bad rumors about competitors to monopolize using potion ingredients. Countless guild bowled over market share, and for him he wants something that is stable. Yonar asked what subject are you interested in? He said are you asking me? In his mind he was thinking that, I want to take subjects that are less competitive and easy to get good grades in. My priority goal is to become an imperial officer, in other words a government worker, regardless of field of focus. What matters the most are your grades and qualification, but I'm sure a passionate girl like her would feel left down if I said that. He replied her that I'm planning on deciding after trying out various things over the next month. You should not rush important decisions, right? The prince was rushing towards them and said, guys, there is a problem. I think there was a thief in my room. There is nothing in there. It's completely empty. After hearing this, both of them were looking at him. However, he was still insisting that there is a thief in his room. The next day Lian was reading about a basic magic comprehension. He was thinking, it is a core subject for first years and the lecture times are different for every dorm. But after looking towards everyone's faces and reaction, he asked, What's up with everyone? Yonar replied we are hungry and the bed were so uncomfortable that we did not sleep well. Lian was thinking that is it really that hard? Compared to his past life at that time, he was asking to his friend that am I seeing this right? I don't see meal time in the schedule. His friend gave him a chocolate bar and said this is your rations for the day, so eat it when you can. He was looking annoyingly towards his friend. His friend said don't look at me like that. I have to eat the same thing. His friend said but a feast is waiting for you when we finish. Lian said I'm going to kill you if it's ramen. In a happy state his friend replied it's not ramen. But cup ramen you even get a triangle kimbap. At the current time he was. Thinking this is definitely far better than before. One of the student asked this is our lecture hall right? The girl replied I'm just glad it's on the first floor. 
They opened the door and both of them were shocked and said what the hell is this? I could have sworn that this is our lecture hall, but inside there is Troll. With a smile the woman replied, I don't eat people. Meanwhile, trolls are the ferocious and dangerous monster that are infamous to even the most sheltered nobles. Here is a troll in our lecture hall that's wearing proper clothing. The woman said welcome everyone please take a seat. All of the students seated on their position. The woman said nice to meet you everyone and then she introduced herself. She said my name is Garcia Kim. I'm a half troll I understand why you are all scared. But there is no need to be afraid. I don't eat people. While saying this she was licking her lips. And in a fiercely way she said unless I get very hungry. After hearing this all of the students were scared. Lian was thinking you will eat us if you are hungry. She said that was a joke but I regret it already. Shall we start the lecture? She put out her hand and casted a magic. She said the majority of the students here would not have ever used magic before. That's because magic is extremely dangerous. And as such only adults are permitted to use magic. But everyone here are magician seeds who have received the title of steel. This lecture aims to also help you find which kinds of magic you have aptitude for. The magician path is rough and rigorous journey, and I wish to become your compass. After hearing that the teacher is very kind to them, Lian was thinking that the professors here were not all like the headmaster. She said let's start with the basics what exactly is magic? The princess said it's the undertaking of a magician to change the world with their will. The teacher said it's a good answer, but to add on to it, it's using magic energy mana as the fundamental force to change the world. Those who have enrolled in this academy are talented enough to feel this magic energy and recognize it. But to use magic we have to go beyond that. You have to call magic energy with your own will and delicately weave it together. Only then will magic be cast. With a smile she said it's commonly believed that magic requires a chant or a motion to cast it. But what's really important is your own will. You must not forget that. She said it seems like I went on for quite a while. Why don't we try it ourselves? Everyone please stand up and take out your wands and gather magic energy. Lian was thinking that now we are finally using magic. There was a light coming out from his wand, the teacher said while maintaining the magic energy. I want you all to create the image of light in your heads. Yona was thinking that it's hard. Controlling magic energy was like you are pulling on the reins of a building charging horse. If he loses concentration for even a second it will disperse, the teacher said while you concentrate to prevent the magic energy from dispersing. We will chant our spell, she said oh light, and then there is a certain light coming out from her wand, she said your chant can be whatever comes to your head. Just keep in mind that a short chant might be easier for keeping focus right? Lian was remembering the points he read on the book. The first one is gather magic energy. Second one is transform magic energy with your will. The third one is to chant a spell. He think he could get the gist of it. He started to cast the spell and then a light coming out of it. He was thinking it was not like it will work just because I get it. All of the student were struggling with the first spell of their life. The prince said why is it like this? The magic energy is acting on its own. The prince was about to hit by his magic spell. The teacher saved him and said, if you fail to control it the magic could go wild and hurt someone. But since it's the professor's role to stop that from happening, let yourself practice in peace. Don't worry if you have more magic energy left try it again. On the second attempt the prince said why not it working, 66% students are still trying. The professor was thinking that Luminate might be the simplest spell, but it normally takes over. A month of practice to learn it, but this is something that the students must overcome themselves, so I would not tell you. She said all right try it again, in the third attempt half student gave up, at the fourth attempt majority of the students gave up and the three students remaining, at the fifth attempt one student is still trying, after few more attempts, someone said excuse me professor. It was Lehan he said I'm sorry to cut you off but must I continue? It seems like I am the only one left. The professor was thinking that we are already at the seventh attempt. Even if a freshman has a lot of magic energy, they should normally hit their limit on the fifth attempt. In the east a certain tribe calls it key. Some likes to show off magic call it ether, and some stubborn priests call it divine energy. 
This power with a variety of name was a source of magician strength, as you have to use the magic energy within you each time you cast a spell. It was a matter of course that young novice magician often faced magic energy deficiency. Professor was thinking that his complexion was fine despite it being the seventh attempt. She asked, what's your name? He replied, my name is Leon. The fact that he said his name first, not his house's name, it earned favor from the professor who saw a student put equality in action. The professor said, would you please step forward? And could you please give me your hand? She holds his hand and felt the unimaginable thing. There was a lot of water, and she was drowning in it. While checking this she was lost and Leon asked her is there an issue? With a fake smile she said no it's nothing, shall we get back to class? While on the other side the prince were talking, they should try and save him if she eats him. Yona said shut up for a bit idiot, you don't understand anything. The professor said Leon please come see me for a second, after the lecture is over. He said okay professor I will come. After that the professor said I'm sure all of you have felt it, but it's this easy for you to run out of magic energy. But don't get impatient because of it. As you practice, the amount of magic energy you have will increase and you will use less each time. Occasionally a student with a lot of motivation loses control while practicing and get hurt. So we should be careful right Gainando? After hearing that the professor said his name, the prince replied in an awkward state, yes, teacher. She said, also, I don't eat students. We will end today's lecture here. Good work, everyone. Thank you for the class. And then Leon was about to enter into the professor cabin. He said, excuse me, professor, what's going on? Why did you call me out separately like this? She said, in truth, I heard about your prior to our lecture from the headmaster. In a sweaty way, he was thinking from that cycle lich. She said no need to worry just calm down. The headmaster may seem like he has a few screws loose but he's a kind person. She was thinking that the headmaster has a sharp eye for people. At the meeting with the professor every year, he gives the professor an explanation of the new students. He tell them to be careful of that beast man. He's more than capable of burning down the dome multiple times over. Or she's a half demon careful with holy magic near her. However, this is what he say about Leon. He has the qualities of a massive fool. The professor was thinking about a massive fool. He said you could take that at face value. But there is a saying in the East. A massive fool can also be a massive genius. What he really wanted to say is that he seems the qualities of someone who will greatly succeed. At that time, she was wondering what kind of student he is. She have a great expectation for Lehan Wardenas. At the current time Leon was asking professor, what happened why did you stop talking? She was thinking that she can't tell him all of that. She said the reason I called you is because you have too much magic energy. He replied oh I see. In his mind he was thinking it's great but is that something you need to see me privately about? She said you don't have just a little more. I can't even fathom the limits of it. After hearing this Leon was shocked. The amount of magic energy they have is one of magicians' determining factor. If you lack magic energy you need to use convoluted methods to draw out more magic energy. So having a lot of magic energy means you are free of such restrictions. In other words it signifies great talent. Lian was very happy after hearing this, and thinking that if what the professor is saying is true, then there is nothing but a rosy path ahead of me. However she said it's a great shame. In a hurry state he asked what do you mean? Isn't it good to have a lot of magic energy? She said that might be true but you have too much. She took a glass of water and said let's compare magic energy to the water in this cup. It is easy to control it. However let's say you need to control an amount that is as large as the sea. That should be difficult don't you agree? He was thinking that then that means the difficulty of controlling magic energy. The core principle behind magic is at an unreasonably high level. He was very sad after hearing this and sit down on his knees. However, the professor gave him a bracelet. He asked, what is this? She replied, it's a bracelet that absorbs magic energy. It should help you out for now. He said, so there is no problem as long as I have this. Thank you, professor. She said, why would I have called you in if it was such a simple problem? He asked, do you have any other words of advice? She said I will help a bit if you use a lot of spells to deplete your magic energy. You are allowed to practice on your own, 
since there would not be any accident due to magic energy paid depletion. In a sad state he said thank you professor, he was thinking that he don't need such a special privileges. His future is now looking bleak, he will have to make sure to keep his grades up starting now. Currently he was with the Yonar and the Prince, he said hey guys do you have any classes you are thinking of taking? With a bright smile Yonar said I'm going to take alchemy of course, do you guys want to take it with me? The prince said what are you saying? Alchemy is meant for servants, what principles are there to learn there? Yonar you are so silly you know? After saying this he laughed. In an angry way she tights her fist and said Gainando, she told Lian can you step aside for a moment? He noticed that something is wrong, the prince looked towards her. And then she hit him very hardly and said don't ask for a potion again when you end up in the hospital. Lian knew a thing or two about fighting, thanks to sword lessons from Aurelong. And in his eyes that was a full marks punch, Lian and Yonar were on their way to basic alchemy comprehension. Lian asked was hitting him that hard okay? She said it's fine as long as I apologize tomorrow. After hearing this reply he realized that it must not have been the first time she hit him. He looked around and said there are a lot of students from the other towers. She replied you are right there is especially a lot of students from the Tower of the Black Turtle. One of the people are looking at him. He was thinking that he don't really care that they are here. But their gazes bother him. Peasants normally have two reactions towards nobility. One of two reactions when they encounter a noble is the fear. Because they don't want to get entangled with them. Or they show hostility. One of the girls said stop starting. Warden Az is here too. Her friends said so what? Even the Warden Az house can't do anything inside the academy. Lian was thinking that if he act overly friendly it might just backfire. Someone said is everyone here? Lian immediately looked towards where the voice coming from. He want to find out who is the professor. Because he see a lich and a half troll as a professor. So it would not be strange to see some other bizarre professor. However he found that the professor is just a normal dwarf. Professor said my name is Yurgon. You can just call me Professor Yurgon. He said I'm sure you're all thinking the same thing. He pointed towards a big building and said we have such a majestic building. Yet why are we gathered in a field without a single desk? The princess said to feel nature. And understanding what powers exist in nature is important for an alchemist. The professor said that's not the reason why we are here. In an awkward way the princess kept quiet, Yonar asked what do you think Lian? He replied I'm not sure maybe because it's a good place to gather materials. The professor was listening all of this and he pointed towards him and said, that's correct. You are quite the smart iron head I mean new student. The princess was looking at him in a rivalry way. He was thinking that setting aside the fact that my shot in the dark was the correct answer. Please don't feel a rivalry towards me over this, the professor said, attention everyone. The real reason why we have gathered here is so I can teach you the most vital requirement for alchemy. I'm sure you are all thinking that. What's required for alchemists is exceptional intelligence and precise magic control. But that's far from reality. In a happy state Yonar was writing all of these in her notebook. Professor said the most important ability for alchemist is material collection. After hearing this all of the happy mood of Yonar fade away. That's all for today video. If you want to know what happened next, then like and subscribe. Atler Animation YouTube Channel